Hey there friends, welcome to the craft room. My name is Susan, this is Revive DIY and Upcycle Designs by Sue. I'm so glad you're joining me here. Welcome, happy Saturday afternoon, almost evening here on the East Coast. I am in North Carolina and I'm an independent designer with Chalk Couture and today I'm gonna finish up my project that I started yesterday because I just hate leaving things hanging and I wanted to, I'm excited to see how this turns out. So come on in and join me in the craft room um, and we'll finish it up together. I, only, I did some of the work since yesterday. Um, I got up here about a half hour ago and I decided I'd get some of it done before I came on camera so you guys didn't have to suffer through all of it. But I did want to show you the process in case you wanted to try it for yourself. So come on in. Oh, got a wild one. Um, come on in and join me. <laughs> real quick all right let me make sure everything is up up i want to make sure i can see you guys i want to make sure i am showing on here Woohoo! yes i am and hang on a second let me see here when you hop on make sure you say hi hit that heart button let me know where you're watching from i would love to know okay real quick I am going to sprinkle this out into another group and if you guys did that I am just so appreciative when you do that it just helps me out tremendously and I really appreciate it so I'm just posting a few links in the comments in case you guys need to access any of them oops my man I'm gonna have to undo that one let me delete that y'all I completely messed up okay saying so hang on just a second and I promise we're going to finish this up and it's not going to take very long because like I said, I did some of the prep work. I already did some of the work ahead of time. Um, so I think you guys are going to like it. And I am excited that it's actually working out. Y'all bear with me. I thought I had this all ready to go and I forgot I needed to add this thing here. Okay. And now I can get this on here. There we go. There we go. How is your Saturday going? You guys, it's like 87 degrees here and we have high humidity. So it's crazy. It is crazy. It went from, you know, I was complaining last week how cool it was and rainy and it's still been overcast all day, but it has been hot. We didn't even do anything. I couldn't even sit down on my porch this morning and have um, coffee or anything. So, all right. So hopefully that's the right one on there. And yes, we are good. So we are good to go. All right, so if you joined me yesterday, you saw that we got started on a project using, uh, let me get my transfer out, this Life is Sweet transfer. I am gonna still do another project with it, probably 4th of July, because I can just see this in 4th of July colors. But I had purchased some wood cutouts in the shapes of the popsicles. I didn't get the words, I think I could have, but I chose just to get the popsicles. And um, we chalked, I painted them yesterday, and we chalked them yesterday, and I said um, I wanted to Mod Podge on the back. So I did that with, and I did it very quickly, I did it with four of them. I'm gonna show you how to do this last one, how I did it, because this is my favorite Mod Podge technique, um, or decoupage, whatever you wanna call it. I did go ahead and punch holes in the top of them, and I was able to punch holes, you guys, this guy is the bomb. I use this to punch holes in my metal piece that we're gonna put the words life is sweet on. And we are gonna make ourselves like a mobile, uh, a mobile, whatever you wanna call it, or even like it could kind of be like a wind chime. It, you know, I don't know if it's gonna, it's not gonna make a pretty sound, but it could kind of like be like a wind chime. I just thought it would be super fun to do. So um, that's what we're gonna finish up today. And if you remember, I also showed you that this napkin was my inspiration piece. That was for my colors. So that is why I chose um, the colors I did and we I am decoupaging that on the back so that I have a finished looking project since I'm gonna hang it and you might be able to see both sides, okay? So I have already cut half of this, the napkin in half. Isn't that adorable with the fringe? I gotta find another project where I can actually use the fringe because that's just way too cute. But um, I went ahead and cut it in half and I wanted to remind you, when you cut them in half and when you're getting ready to, if you're going to Mod Podge with a napkin or decoupage, you always want to take off um, the other ply. If it's a three ply, you want to get it down to one ply. This was only a two ply, um, but you want to get it down to that, that thickness, that one ply. So I went ahead and, and did that because I've done the other ones, but I wanted to show you that step as well. I always save these because I can use them for my wax and stuff like that, you guys. Now. 
My favorite technique for uh, decoupaging is, and using, and I'm just using my podge, um, is I paint the surface that I am going to apply whatever I'm putting on it, whether it's a fabric, whether it's cardstock, whether it's um, a napkin, tissue paper, whatever. I paint it first. So that's what I was doing. That's what I did with these. And I paint it, well, of course you have to paint it. You have to cover it with Mod Podge. And I actually over covered most of the other ones. But you just gotta cover it with Mod Podge. And you can get that even at the Dollar Tree, guys. Um, even actual brand name Mod Podge at the Dollar Tree. Um, and I cover it all the way, the surface, and make sure that you get it on the edges because you wanna make sure that your napkin adheres to the edges really well or whatever you're using that particular day. Um, I need just a tiniest bit more and my brush is starting to harden because I already did the other ones. <laughs> but just make sure you have really good coverage. Um, sometimes you might even wanna do two coats, depends. But really good coverage of all the area that you wanna put your uh, that you want to decoupage on. All right, and now once I've done that, that's done. Now I take my dryer and I dry it. And the reason I do that is because if you were to use it right now, that's the old fashioned technique and I used to do that. But if you're using it now with something as thin as that one ply napkin, guess what? It, um, hi Beth, thanks for joining me. I hope you're having a great Saturday. Um, did I say this is, my name is Susan, this is why DIY and Upcycle Designs, I don't know. If you're just joining me, I'm so happy you're here. I love it when y'all join me to craft. Um, if you were to put this one ply on here while it's wet, you have more of a chance of getting wrinkles or a tear. So, I like to dry it first. Use whatever you have to dry it. This actually happens to be a little baby thrift store find that I found, a little baby dryer that somehow still works, packs a big punch, has a low and high setting. And you want to get it dry all the way. Mine's still a little bit tacky, so I'm just going to finish drying it. And the reason I like to do that is because now I can play around with it a little bit more and I don't have to be as gentle and I don't have to worry about it tearing or, or, um, or even trying to get um, bubbles in it. So once I've done that, I need to put this aside. I also, over here right now, I have my iron on. Okay, and um, I have it on my highest setting. This is my little craft iron I keep up here. No water in it. I have it on the highest setting and it is ready to go because I've already done these other ones. So you want some, you know, some kind of, you want to put it on a surface that's not going to damage by heat. So I use my little pad that I use when I'm um, heat setting my shirts, like the one I'm wearing. And now it's all ready to go. And I am just going to take my napkin and lay it on the space where I want it. And if I didn't like it, guess what? I can move it because it's dry. If it was wet, I would be out of luck. So I can do that and I can try to smooth it out a little bit while it's, I mean, it's still a little tacky, but while it's dry. But then you need to take a piece of parch, parchment paper, parchment paper, not wax paper. There's another technique using um, saran wrap but I'm not showing that today. But there is another technique with my Podge with Serena Wrap. But take a piece of parchment paper and place it over top of your project, okay? And now take your iron that's nice and hot, and I start in the middle and I press out. And then I just am basically ironing my shape and I'm getting any wrinkles out, hopefully. And I'm also just reactivating my glue, which is all my Podge really is, is a type of glue. So I'm just reactivating it, making it warm again. So now it's gonna grab a hold of my, um, I'm gonna turn this off because I will forget and I guarantee you I'll end up burning myself. I don't wanna do that. So that just reactivated my heat. And now, as you can see, I'm in good shape. And just check your edges, make sure that it's, it's on there. If not, get your iron back over there and do it again. But you can see now it's attached, it's glued on there, right? So. All you need to do then is get a, um, you can get a sanding block, which you can get those just about anywhere, Dollar Tree, Walmart, hardware stores, wherever. Or I also, for small things like this project and ones that have curves and little, like uh, this one here even has like a bite mark, right? I use an old fingernail file that doesn't work so well anymore on my fingernails, but it will work perfectly on these projects. And all you're gonna do is on the side where you've decoupaged, you just take 
your sanding device and you go in a downward motion all around the edge that you just adhered it to, okay? Actually, I should have let that cool off a minute because I think it's still a little warm. Uh, or I might have it on my fingers. That's probably what it is because I've been rushing. I have the small window of time today, you guys. How are you guys doing? What's going on with your Saturday? Um, my, I have my grandson. Oh, you know, you guys know he lives with me and I co-parent. Um, but his daddy is out of town this weekend, so I've got him on my own. And my hubby is only here for like this small window of time in the middle of the day. And I had to get a shower. So uh, I have a very short amount of time before my hubby has to leave for work and um, to get the project done. So that's why I went ahead and did some of it ahead of time. Because you guys know when I get on here, I am not a fast crafter. That is why the project did not get done yesterday. I try. I do try. But I don't always succeed. And this fingernail file is probably actually getting to the end of even where I could use it for this kind of purpose. But if you just go around the whole edge in a downward motion, that will take it off and you'll have a nice clean edge to your surface. You don't have to worry about cutting it close or anything like that. Now, the only problem is if you do fabric, fabric is great and you can definitely do it with fabric. You can't use this technique. You gotta take scissors and you gotta trim it as close to po as possible. And that can be a little challenging, but if you get a pair of scissors like these I got from Walmart, these are um, like almost like embroidery floss or embroidery slippers, slippers, scissors, sorry guys. Um, those work well for those little small edges, but see, now we're all, we're all done. So now it's a finished project. So now I'm gonna take my, I told you guys yesterday, I really do think I probably need to get a different fingernail file. Um, this is my crocodile. I have had this since uh, my scrapbooking days. So many, many, many years ago. I started scrapbooking when I was pregnant with my daughter and she is 23, almost 24. I cannot believe that. But um, yeah, so this thing is a heavy duty guy. It works well for me, but we do have punches on my website if you need one. But if not, if you have one of these, go pull it out of your stash and you can use it for projects like this. It goes through this kind of, this kind of thin wood like this, no problem. And I didn't believe it would, but I'll show you in a minute. It actually went through um, my metal as well. And I, it didn't damage it. And actually, it probably even sharpened it. Because I don't know if you guys know or not, but like you can use scissors. You can use aluminum foil to like sharpen your scissors. It helps that. And so I'm figuring hmm, it might have even helped it. So that's what I did there. So now I have a hole in it because I'm going to make these guys hang. Got all of them ready. Make them hang from this surface and so do you see what i'm saying i went ahead and punched holes it came like this it came from the dollar tree it had a jute um hanger it already had the holes up here to hold it but i went ahead and punched five more holes in the bottom to be able to hold my popsicles because i want this to be the top part and then these to kind of dangle from it now you can use anything you want you can find some wood or whatever you want to make your little top part of your mobile um, I just chose this. Now, because this is metal, um, I am actually going to wax this, you guys, because my transfer is going to want to stick to it really well. And um, I, I'm just going to wax it because I've had good luck doing that. I did it the other day and it worked well. So I'm just going to apply a thin layer of wax to the middle to kind of protect my transfer and to help me... Um, Um, be able to pull it off easier without it trying to stretch my transfer. My transfers are reusable and I'm like I said I've already got another project in mind so once I apply the wax I do have this in my shop but most craft stores have it you just want some type of surface wax. Now I'm going to buff it in just to make sure I have it on there nice and even and that it's not too clumpy or anything. So as you can see this is longer than this. I mean, yeah, I could no, not get it on there. So I'm going to move it around a little bit. I'm going to do life. Let's see. Am I going to just do life or am I going to do life is and then sweet is what I'm going to do. Um, I am going to fuzz this again because I washed it yesterday. I can probably move this. I'm running out of room over here, guys. I'm running out of room. So I'm going to get my fuzzing cloth. And I'm just going to fuzz the bottom part because that's all I'm using uh, for today. The rest of it, what I'll do is I'll put it on my back, keep it on my backer sheet so that it doesn't try to grab anywhere else while I'm trying to fuzz the words. Just 
Just make sure you have all of your, oh my gosh, come on. Come on, guy. Come on. I can get it lined up, but I don't want to cover my words. If you guys are new here, let me know where you're watching from. I am just so glad to have anyone join me. I love, in my opinion, it's much more fat, fun to Ooh, craft with friends. I need to slow down, y'all. Hold on. Let me just slow down a minute. I need to just slow down a minute. I, I have been going, I didn't get very much sleep last night because the little buddy, I let him sleep in our bed, which he doesn't usually do, and that didn't go well. I mean, it went fine, but uh, I didn't get as much sleep, and then, so I'm running on empty there, and then I bet he popped up before 8 a.m. this morning, so we've been going ever since. So, all right, so I'm going to fuzz this just a few times because I've waxed my surface. I should be okay, and if you guys will bear with me, I am going to actually um, keep it facing me for a minute while I line it up because I'm not sure where I need to put this yet. I'm going to try to use my grid that's on my mat. You see on my table, I have a grid. I'm going to try to help use that. And of course, I did not punch a hole in the middle, but I'm going to try to figure out where the middle is. I think it's between the those two. So I'm going to put that about, I'm going to try to do this one first. And then that should help me line up my other um, words above it if I do this bottom one first. I'm going to just press that right there, and then I'll show you guys what I'm doing. See, I'm just going to do the word sweet right now, and I've got that kind of in the middle, I think. I hope. And hopefully I'm not picking up stuff there. Now, I was trying to think which color would be good to use. And you guys, if, if you're commenting, I can't see any comments, so I apologize. Oh, you're from Jupiter, Jupiter, Florida? Awesome. I Can you see your comment here? Okay, wonderful, because you never know. I, sometimes I can see it and sometimes I can't. Okay, I was thinking um, I might do it in, I think one of the, I could do it in the pink, but I feel like I've already done it in a lot of pink. So I'm thinking I might do it in a blue in the blue so i need to choose i don't know i feel like the darker one might do better i feel you know what i feel like would do best you guys is our brand new color of the month midnight i think that would show up best but i'm gonna use um i'm gonna use the shimmer splash which is what i used on the bottom of that popsicle and this is also kind of inspiring me as well you guys um that's what i'm gonna use for the top to replace the juke so I did not even get a chance yesterday, you guys, to wash my squeegees. I did wash my transfer because that's more important. The squeegees I can wash later, but I didn't even get a chance to do that. I'm not used to having to rush through everything like I have the last two days. Okay, so here we go. Easy peasy. And I love these new transfers because your chalk paste just glides right on and you don't have a lot of waste. It just goes right in the silkscreen area. And then you can just scrape off any extra and put it back in your jar and save it for another day and another project. Now the shimmer, I do suggest you press a little firmer just because it's got the grittiness that makes it shimmer, um, just to make sure it gets through your silk screen. Okay. And then that's what that looks like. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that sweet? Hi Nita, thanks for watching. If you're new here, my name is Susan. This is Revived DIY and Upcycle Designs. So happy you're joining me here in the craft room today. Look at that. Isn't that cool, guys? I think that was a good color choice. I think that'll show up good, don't you? Okay, so I'm going to real quick, that would dry on its own in about seven or eight minutes because it's a shimmer, but I'm going to real quick help it along just so I don't sm accidentally smudge it when I go to put up the other words above it. And hopefully I chose good with the spacing. If not, I did wax this so I could clean it off and try again. But let's hope, let's keep our fingers crossed. Tell me what the weather's like where y'all are. I would love to know. Like I said, it's 87 here, but with the humidity, I'm sure it feels like 90. And then tomorrow it's gonna be 75. Y'all, I can't figure it out, it's crazy. 
But our neighborhood pool, I mean, it would have been a good pool day, I'm sure. Maybe the water's even warming up some, but I haven't been at all yet. It's only been open a few weeks. Um, but usually it's very small for our development, and it gets so crowded, and I just don't enjoy it. Um, so, and my grandson, he didn't ask, <laughs> and I didn't mention it to him, but um, yeah, so. Okay, that's dry. Cool. All right, so now I'm going to place the Life is Sweet above it. Let's see if I can get this lined up, y'all. I hope you like this idea. I hope it inspires you. Ooh, I might have to really squeeze it in. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. And if I were to guess, using that as the middle, I think that'll be okay. I think that'll be spacing-wise. That'll be all right. Maybe come up a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm trying to use my little grid on my mat to help me some because I am definitely an eyeballer. Are you guys eyeballers too? And, um, you know, but I can really notice when things are off, but I'm yet I'm, I don't measure. So go figure. Go figure. Okay. We're going to try that. And I'm just going to press down my silk screen area here because I don't want to get a hold of the, what I've already chalked if the sticky part gets on there. I might want to try to pull it up because I didn't put a, a layer of wax over top of it. You do not have to seal this unless for some reason, oh, it's raining. I think we're supposed to get a storm later tonight and that's why it's going to be warmer. I mean, cooler tomorrow. Um, we've had a lot of rain though, but you all need it if it's in Florida, I think. Didn't I hear y'all needed rain? Uh, I don't think you guys have been getting as much as we do. We have. We had a very wet spring. Hopefully that makes the farmers happy, but. Now, if it is gonna be out in the weather somehow, you may wanna spray, spray it with a clear coat sealer, but it shouldn't need it if it's just decorative somewhere. If it's in a covered porch or something that you don't have to worry about it, it's completely up to you, you can. Um, I don't know if I will. And the same thing with for the popsicles. Um, again, it's, you know, that's, that's a one-time use. It's permanent now. But if you're worried about it eventually wearing off, you can always spray it. If I was given it as a gift, I'd probably spray it just because that's what I usually do. You finally caught up with the rain. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. You know, it's not good to have too much, but then... You know, we need a certain amount. Oh, y'all, it did pick up some of my ass. I let it touch it. That's okay. I can fix that after the fact. Ugh, I picked up some of the S. See, the chalk came off. If I had gone back over that with a layer of wax, it wouldn't have done that. But I can fix it. I'll fix it after it's all done. But see, that's what I got so far. What do you guys think? Do you like that? Okay. I'm going to set this over to the side for a minute while this is drying. But this is what I was saying. I'm going to put this up at the top just to kind of play with all the uh, colors. And I may, I, did, I couldn't decide if I was gonna decoupage this or not. I was thinking I might put the napkin on the back of here too. Let me know if you guys think I should do that. Let me know in comments while I'm tying, getting my string. So, let me know if you guys think I should uh, put the napkin on the back of this cloud as well, or if I should just leave it silver. Okay, so I have this, I'm gonna call it twine for lack of a better word, I don't know what it is, but I've had it for a while in my craft room. It's white and that's what color I wanted in this particular project. So that's why I did these holes. And actually this was the one I did yesterday before I put the napkin on. I need to punch that hole. So I have just put a piece of uh, scotch tape on the end to kind of make it like pointy. Yes, you think it would be pretty to have that on the back? I think it would too. Maybe I'll go ahead and do that. Um, it won't take long. So I'm just gonna, I use that to help me when I'm beading as well. And I'm gonna do these all different lengths. So um, I'm not gonna cut them exactly the same. Um, I'm just gonna kinda, I want them all to hang a little bit differently. So I'm just gonna kinda, I don't know. I'm just gonna, I haven't figured out how long I want it. Let's see, maybe. Maybe there. 
All right, so what I'm gonna do is use that as a guide and then I'm gonna cut it a little different each time. I don't want them all to be the same. Because really, I don't want them to touch each other either because I didn't line up my holes like enough to make it so that it would be like for sure um, okay hopefully that's good I don't know I'm just kind of winging it so let's see I don't know if I'll have to do that with each one of them or not I think I'm gonna put the fat one in the middle so where's the longest make them go short to long or I could just make them different which one's different let's see where's the longest string okay that one's the longest and I am just going to tie a little knot around the back oh I might be able to get it through there without doing it there we go I'm just going to tie a couple knots double knot back here I still have to finish up my teacher gift that I started on Thursday. So I probably won't be able to get to do that until Monday because tomorrow I don't have any help with him and I just don't like leaving him to his own devices. So I just did a double knot back there to hold it, okay? And then the rest of them, we're just gonna kind of go with it. I have no idea where they're gonna end up. If you can't feed it through, that's why you Use your tape. <clears throat> I could have cut the ribbon. Uh, I guess I could have cut that before it came on too. I'm telling you guys, I was hustling even when I got up here just to get what I got, got done. Oh my goodness. Slow down. I know my husband wanted to try to leave around five, but he doesn't have to leave around five. And he got home later from golf than what he said he was gonna anyway. So I'm like thinking, oh, you know what I should be doing? Cause I gotta tie that other side through the top. Forgot about that, you guys. Should be feeding this through this way. And then leaving that side, that's what I should do. So what I was to realize is after the first one is that I'm tying a knot in the bottom. So I do need my string to go through the hole and then the knot's gonna go, you know, at the end. But instead of doing it on the end where I taped, I'm gonna do it on the opposite end because that other end now I'll have it still primed and ready to put through the hole on the cloud. Does that make sense, you guys? So it's like this, right? And then when I go to put it through the Wow, it'll be fine. Let's see, do I want to make that one? Where's the shortest one? I feel like the little guy needs to be the shortest one. Let's do that. So, back. There we go. Got to get those teacher gifts done. My my oldest is done. I mean, my youngest is done with school. He's a senior. He graduates on Friday, so he has a whole week. He had a whole week off. A little bit over a week off from his last class till graduation. And then my grandson finishes kindergarten on Wednesday. Wednesday is his end of year party, but then they have to go a half day on. So I don't know. I think my son will probably have him go. But I don't know. 
on that half day, that last half day. I mean, it's usually just fun. Maybe he'll let him go. Let's see. I didn't know, because you know, he's gonna be home all summer. <laughs> Gotta get him in doing some activities and I'm sure I'll be helping with that. We did not sign him up for any camps this year. Last year he did camps and we didn't wanna make him have to do that this year. Since he's been in school so much, we'll just find some fun activities for him to do here and there without it being so structured. Got several things on my list that I wanna do with him. He was so cute because in my other room I have I have a ton of yarn because I'm a crafter. You know, I'm, I've been a crafter for as long as I can remember. And um, I have a ton of yarn and he was in the room with me the other night on Thursday night when I watched him when my sons went to the movie and um, he was in there playing around and he saw my yarn and he goes, oh, I remember this. And he pulled out one of the skeins of it. And then I have all my crochet and knitting needles there. And he said, he, he said, can you make me a sweater? I said, well, first of all, it's a little warm for sweaters now. I said, and second of all, I don't know if I can do a sweater. That's a little more advanced for me. I'm not an advanced knitter or crocheter. I just like to do it. Um, I said, but we could maybe figure out something to make you. And he said, can you teach me? And I said, yeah, I can teach you. We could work on it this summer. We could do maybe a little bit every day. So I said, sure, we'll do that. If that's what he wants, I'll show him. I have to reteach myself because it's been so long since I've done it though. And um, this morning he goes, oh, mama, you forgot. He doesn't say it, forgot. He says, forgot. And I said, what did I forget? And he goes, you forgot to teach me. And I said, no, no, no. I said, this summer we're going to do it. Okay, so now all these guys are ready. Okay. Let's go ahead and decoupage this one. It should be dry. Let's see. Shall we hit it just? I'm going to turn my iron back on, you guys. Oh, I can't believe I hit it, though. All right, where's my paper? I can't believe I pulled off part of my S. Just make sure. I'm going to put my mod and I need the other half of the napkin. Oh, you guys. Oh, maybe I could get this fringy part to hang off. That would be so cool. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. Okay, I'm going to this like this. Because I feel like there's glue on that side. And I don't want to mess up my image. could have done that first. All right, so let's put some Mod Podge on here. Oh, I like that idea. We're gonna get some fringe. <gasps> it's gonna be so fun. All right, so I'm thinking before I do that, why didn't I do that before I did it? I think I probably should get this through here first. Don't y'all think? I think so. No, maybe not. I think it'll be all right. It'll be okay. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. going to cover all of this same as I did with my wood. Do the exact same. Just kind of focus on your edges. I actually need more. I'm surprised. I thought I probably had too much. I usually get too much. Dry that. Oh, I think this is gonna be so cute, you guys. Can you? Now, if you're new here also, and you'd like to like and follow my page, I would certainly appreciate that. It always helps to have followers. I'd love to keep you guys up to date and show projects with you guys. I appreciate you letting me come into your world a little while and just share my love of creating with you. Oh, 
Oh, that was fast. Super fast. Okay, so let's see how I can get this on here. Can I get this on here? Let's take this off. Ooh, you guys. Go around the edge here because I can tell there's some. Now, you do need to be careful with your chalk because um, I waxed it and because this is a slick surface, you can scrape that off if you decide that's what you want to do. But let's see how we can place this on here and get the fringe to kind of hang off the bottom. I think that is going to be super fun. not going to have any blue. Do I want to move it over so I can get a little, I don't think I can get a little of every color. I think we're going to have to go without the blue on this one, guys, because of the way it, it's made. But we've got the extra blue on our cloud, so it'll be okay. Oh, you guys, hold up. Forgot to take my layers off. Here I'm telling you guys to do it, and then I didn't even do it. I'm like, why is it bunching up? And then I remembered. I forgot. All right, try again. I am so excited that that's going to work. Okay. So I've got it laying on there. My little pad again. Smooth it out. Lay this on here. And let's reactivate it. I usually start in the middle if I have a bigger thing like this where I think I might have a crease or some wrinkles. I try to start in the middle and work my way out on the surface, whatever it is I'm using. And this will kind of um, also kind of hide the attaching the We are almost finished. This is going to be the best part, the funnest part. Woo! Metal's a little hot. Better let it cool off. Better let it cool off. Where's my, oh, I threw it away, didn't I? Let's see. Maybe we'll use the same job for this time. See? That's how well it's adhered. Make sure it's pulled off some. All right. I might have to go back and touch it up some in the corners. Since it's a cloud, it's got some. I don't want to go too far down. Notice that you've missed any of the edges. You can always go back and touch it up with the Mod Podge. Like, just take a little brush in the corner areas. Like, if you notice any of it, it's not. You know what? I didn't think about that. The fringe is going to be kind of, I think it'll be all right. It's going to be kind of over on the side, but.
And you can decide how far you want to go in. I felt like, oh, maybe I want a little more of that off there and have it end. Isn't that cute? Okay. Now we're going to take, punch my little holes in here. Just my little holes. There it is. For my ribbon. And I can tell I need a little bit more up here. Mod Podge. You can always go back and touch those up. We're not going to do that now. Okay. So let's get our ribbon through here. And again, we're just going to tie a knot. Hopefully I made this long enough that I can do it. I think one knot will work with this. I don't have to do a double because it's a little thicker but I want to make it to where I can actually see it. So make sure when you're putting it through that you have the ribbon face in the right direction. And if you have any questions about any of the products I'm using, I didn't even talk a whole lot about what I got and what I was using or where I got it from. I did last night in part one. Isn't that sweet? Look at that so far. Literally, it's sweet. Um, <coughs> sorry, guys. I forgot to take my allergy pill today. I haven't been outside. It shouldn't matter, but you know how that is. This is just one of these little tools that I've had from the Dollar Tree for a long time. Just poking little holes through. And then, let's see what's what. I say I was going to put this one in the middle. But if you don't want to go back and watch that from last night, what I did last night, then um, you can just message me and I'll tell you where I got everything from. The transfer and the chalk paste, of course, is mine's chalk couture, but the rest of it is not. I have never tried to do something like this, but I may do it now with my woodland creatures. I have woodland creature guys, um, so cute, and a transfer that goes with it. I might try to make them. And you could do this same thing with like foam. Um, if you wanted to get some foam pieces, you could do the same thing. You don't have to use the wood cutouts, but that's what I got so far. That might be. If it's too long, I'll just pull it up through here, knot it, and cut it off, okay? But for right now, this is how we're going to roll. You can always play with that piece. Play with that portion of the project. And you can leave the tape on or cut it off. I'll probably cut it off afterwards. Trying to hurry up for you guys. And if it bothers you that they're not the same length, you can always obviously measure your at the same time, make sure that you're putting your um, 
you know, your twine that you're using or your whatever you're using. You can measure it better than I did. This would even be fun at a in a classroom if you were a teacher. BBS, summer school, if you're doing summer school teaching, um, or even for a party, maybe even in a nursery. You could do the colors in a little baby nursery. And if you didn't want to do the life is sweet on the words, you could always look at this. Guys. I love this. Look at it. Can you see? I might have to come back and show you. And they're going to, you know, they're going to twist and turn, but that's why I, if I need to, I'll figure out a way to make them different on the, but that's why I did the back, finished the back as well. Isn't that fun, you guys? Oh my gosh. I love this. Hit that heart button if you like this project idea. I would love to know. So I can't wait to do it with um, 4th of July colors as well, but I think this is super fun. So many ways you can use it. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to reach out in comments or through a message. I am here to help you, and I hope this inspired you. Um, thanks for letting me share my idea with you, and... Have a great rest of your weekend. Until I see you next time, it'll probably be Monday before I see you again. Um, until I see you next time, please be safe, be healthy, and be blessed. Bye, guys.